Hi, it's Justin from CanadaWhips.com. Today we're going to be talking about whip throws. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to define a throw as any moment where you're hanging on to the whip, you let go of it, and then you grab the whip again. The reason I'm using this definition will become clear a little bit later, but for right now, just think hanging on, releasing, hanging on would mean a throw. I'm going to be using a performance hybrid whip for this video, rather a set of them. I think the performance hybrid whips are the best whips for throws just because they fly the most predictably in the air, in my opinion, but you could throw any type of whip that you want. Uh, shorter is usually better than longer, but you could you know, feasibly use anything, and I would recommend trying because it's super fun, it adds a lot to your movements, it makes your performances more dynamic, and it's just an enjoyable thing to do. I'm going to start the video by giving some tips, and then I'm going to get into the tutorial section. The reason I want to give tips first is because for me, one of the most enjoyable parts about whip cracking has been learning throws, kind of figuring them out, realizing what works and what doesn't work, um, and just kind of throwing the whip in the air and trying to grab it again and then keep going. I really like that, and I'd like that for you too, and so what I'm going to do is give you some tips so that you have the tools, and then you can use those tools to do whatever you want to do, and then if you want some more specifics, um, you could keep going in the video and then learn specific moves uh, to add to your whip cracking. The first tip I'm going to give you is just, kind of like I've already hinted at, just throw your whip in the air. See what happens. Notice how the whip likes to fly. Notice that if you throw too early, maybe it'll flip over, and if you throw too late, it might move away from you. Don't focus too much on getting perfect cracks or catches or anything like that. Just kind of see what happens when you throw the whip. Once you're a little bit more comfortable and you understand how your whip likes to move, Next, you're gonna pay attention on how you're gonna catch. When you hold the whip, you're holding it near the bottom of the handle, and your thumb is pointing up, and in general, that's the place that you want to return to after you've caught the whip. So you'll throw your whip, and you're gonna try and catch, and bring your hand back to where it needs to be. The first thing to, in order to do that is to make sure that you're always catching thumb up. What that means is having your thumb pointing towards the transition and the thong. So if the whip's over here, pointing this way, I'm going to catch underneath because that way my thumb is up. And if the whip's pointing this way, I'm going to catch with my palm facing down because the thong is over there. If you do happen to catch upside down, it's not the end of the world. Todd Rex, who's kind of at the forefront of whip throws, I would say, um, has a move that looks sort of like this, which he uses to get back into this sort of grip. So he'll just spin, and then during the spin, he'll transfer his hand from upside down to regular. Um, or you could hold the whip and then just throw it again to get back here. There is ways of getting out of this upside down sort of dagger type grip, uh, but in general you're going to want to hold, hold it with your thumb facing up and so try and catch it that way too. The other thing that you can do to return your hand to the place where it was before is to catch with a loose grip. It might seem counterintuitive because once the whip's in the air you're just going to want to regain control of it. Um, and so you're going to want to grab really tightly to make sure that you have it and it's secure in your hand. But if you catch with a loose grip, what happens is if you catch up here near the top of the handle, when you swing the whip, you can have the whip slide down back into the palm of your hand. So I'll catch it like this, but then as I'm swinging it, I'm loosening my grip and then it slides back down to where it needs to be and then I can continue to crack. I'll show you an example with an elbow toss. I'm going to catch up near here. Now I'm here, what do I do? Just like that. Finally, I'm gonna mention that when you catch a whip, you have two options. You can swing it around or you can crack it. Just like when you're holding a whip, you have two options. You can swing it around or you can crack it. <laughs> um, what that means is pay attention to where the whip is when you've caught it. So if I throw the whip and I catch it like this, with the thong pointing out this way, there's not really much I can do. I can try and get a crack, but it's probably not gonna go. So instead, I'll catch the whip and then swing it up for a crack. But if I happen to catch the whip in this sort of position, where the handle's pointing up, thong is behind me, this is exactly what I would want before a cattleman's crack. And so I could throw the whip and catch it and then get the crack right after. Similarly, if the whip's over here, I might want to swing it up for a reverse cattleman's crack, or I could catch it and crack it that way. 
I saw in a video by Adam Winrich a long time ago, uh, which I'll link in the description, a really cool catch where you catch the whip and it's pointing down like this, so it's at a negative 45 degree angle, and you can actually crack it sort of like the back half of a fast figure eight. And I'll use this crack a lot. Um, I think it's really cool and there's a lot of cool options um, and positions that you'll be in where that crack is really useful. So you should learn that. Um, yeah, those are my general tips. So try and catch back where your hand was, know how your whip flies in the air, and then have a plan for what's going to happen once you've caught your whip. Um, and with those tips, you can go out and have lots of fun, and I hope that you discover tons of new tricks um, and post the videos of them so that we can watch them, because whip throws are really fun, and they're sort of on the up in terms of popularity, and so I'd love for you to contribute and discover things with us. Yeah, so now I'm going to get into the tutorial section. And for this section, I have three different types of throws, which I'm going to define as releases, tosses, and slings. Um, and these are words that just I use. These are by no means the correct words, uh, but they're just the words that I'm going to use for the purpose of this video because they make the most sense to me. First, releases. A release is just as it sounds. It's a moment when you release the whip and then you catch it again. What I mean by that is you release it, but you don't add any extra force. You don't try and spin the whip. You're just using the momentum the whip already has to get the throw to happen. So, like I said earlier, when I swing the whip, the thong moves. The center of gravity also moves, and so unlike a ball or a frisbee, I can throw the whip and have the momentum keep it going um, without having to really add force to get the whip to go where I want it to go. That's why I'm calling this a release. I'm just releasing the whip. A really easy combo you can do with that is if you do a slow figure eight in front of you, before you do the reverse cattleman, you can release and catch with the other hand and do a slow figure eight in the other hand. So that looks like this. Really simple, you're just throwing or releasing the whip, catching it and cracking it and a cattleman's crack in the other hand. You could do that the opposite way and crack and reverse cattleman's crack, you get the idea. Um, really simple, really easy, really fun and, and dynamic. Another one which is more popular uh, is called Wilkes Wonder, which is normally done in a two-hand routine created by Fiona Wilkes, and it's a release around the neck, like that. So I'm swinging the whip as if I'm about to do an overhead crack, uh, but instead of doing the crack, I just put the whip behind my neck, release, and then catch it again on the other side. I'll show you that from the back. The catch on this one is a kind of a swipe across, so I'll put the whip behind my neck, release, and then my arm swipes across this way uh, to grab the handle of the whip. Yeah, just a basic release, and from there you could go into a cattleman, or you could go into an overhead again. Um, Fiona does it with two, like I said, and she'll use it to change lead hands. It more or less looks like this, I'm not going to be able to do it perfectly. I missed a couple of the cracks, but you get the basic idea. Really cool, really difficult routine. Um, if you're into two-handed whip cracking and you know the Queensland crossover, you should definitely check that one out. Next, we're going to talk about tosses. Or, yeah, tosses. <laughs> a toss is a throw where you actually do apply force to the whip in order to get it to do what you want. So maybe you'll be adding a spin. You want the whip to spin over, um, for example. That would be a toss. An example of this is just a basic underhand toss like I just did, where I'll crack the whip maybe right after a reverse cattleman's crack, and then I'll throw it up in the air like that. Just like that. You could do it over after an underhand flick, you could do it after a fast figure eight. Just a basic, just looks like this. And I'm kind of putting pressure with my index finger as I'm releasing. And that's going to get the whip to spin over, and then once you've caught it, you can bring it up and crack it. Or you could do the that crack that I talked about earlier, and so on and so forth. Another toss that involves 
adding momentum. It would be a wrist roll type toss. I'm not sure what the actual name of this is, but it looks like this. So in this one, I'm swinging the whip up this way as if I'm about to do a cattleman's crack. And then I stop and I pinch the whip in between my index finger and my thumb, like this. So now the whip handle is kind of hanging here and it's swinging underneath. And I'll use the momentum that the whip has down here. And when it's where I want it to be, being on this side, I'm going to pop my hand up and use that momentum to throw the whip into the air. So again, I'm here, pinch, and then up. And I like to catch it and crack it, but you could catch it and spin it or do whatever you want to do. You could also do the same idea the other way. You could go back and forth and sort of a I, would, I call that kind of a, a no-handed slow figure eight. I know it's definitely not a no-handed slow figure eight, but um, yeah, that's the wrist toss. Similar to the wrist toss is the elbow toss. This toss is slightly different because instead of holding onto the handle, I'm gonna be holding on to the thong, but the principle of the swinging motion still applies. So to start, I'm gonna bring the whip up this way. I'm gonna let the thong go down and around my elbow. And once it's up with my hand, I'm going to let go, pinch the thong, and then use the same swing to get the whip to come up and back to me. So that looks like this all together. That's a really cool toss as well. Um, first saw that in a video by Todd Rex, whose name I'm going to be saying a lot. I'm not sure if he made it or not, but I mean, he sure made it famous anyway. <laughs> uh, so thank you, Todd. Um, yeah, so that's an elbow toss. Again, I'm, I'm swinging up. Once I'm holding down here, I swing up, add the momentum, and throw and catch him. Crack. Yeah. Finally, the last type of throw I'm going to cover will be slings. And a sling, I'm going to define as a throw where we're throwing the whip by adding momentum, but we're not necessarily using our hands. So typically it's done with a wrap. I'll give you an example. A neck wrap, I would define as a sling or a reverse elbow toss. I would define as a sling. They're just moves where you have the whip wrapped around you in some way, and then you'll use your body or the momentum of the whip to move it around in the other way. So it's not really a throw per se, but you do let go and then grab again, and so for this, that's why I'm including it in this video. The neck wrap, I first saw in a video by Luke Rollins. I'll link that in the description. He makes it look a million times better than I do, and I've been trying to get my move to look like his, like, the whole time I've been doing this, so uh, you should check that out, but this is the idea. Essentially what you're going to do is spin the whip as if you're going to do an overhead crack. Place the transition sort of on the side of your neck here, and then let the whip come around your neck to the other side, so you're kind of in this like necklace -y type thing. Once the majority of the weight of the whip is on this side of you, you let go of the handle, and you can kind of use your neck to move the handle around to in front of you, and then you catch with the other hand. So it looks like this. Whoa, definitely not what it looks like. Again, like I said, nowhere near as good as Luke Rollins. Yeah, like that. That's a really cool move. I like it a lot. It's also a good way of changing hands. Another one is the reverse elbow toss, which I showed you earlier. Again, first saw this in the video by Todd Rex. Pretty sure he made this up too. Um, really, really awesome, as is everything that Todd does. So you're going to be swinging the whip this way, uh, as if you're going to do a reverse cattleman's crack. But instead, what you're going to do is you're going to poke your arm out, your arm, your elbow. You're going to hold the whip like we were before for the wrist toss, pinched between your index finger and your thumb. And you're going to swing the whip so that the thong goes over your elbow this way. So the whip's kind of hanging over your arm. At this point, you release the handle and you pop the whip up uh, with your elbow. Just like that. Those are two slings that are pretty easy. There's more. It's kind of an area that's not utilized a lot. Um, so there's tons of new discoveries that could be made. Feel free to go out and play with your own. So now, once you're comfortable with throws with one whip, the obvious next step is to do throws with two whips. Um, and there's tons and tons and tons of different ways of doing this. I like, do not have enough time to even explain all the different options. In the description below, I'm going to link a video 
to, I'm going to link to a video called The Answer by Aaron Bonk, and it's a 42 pat, or, this video is so crazy I can't even describe it right now. It's like, it's a video that has 42 different tricks that all involve two whips and throws, but all of the tricks are done in a row with none of the tracks are um, being missed or none of the whips being dropped. Um, it's, it's really, really, really spectacular. Um, and I think not enough people are talking about it. So check that video out if you want a whole bunch of different ideas on how to throw your whips and crack your whips when you're using two. I'm not going to go over all those because I don't know pretty much any of them. And I don't have a lifetime to learn all of the crazy things that Aaron can do. So instead, I'm going to give two basic ideas. The first is just a sort of pattern that you can use to add throws into. And the second is a really easy routine that involves throws. So first is the pattern. It's a pattern called the changing eights. I'm not going to really explain it in detail, but I will link a video to it, link to a video of a tutorial of it in the description uh, by April Choi. So check that out. For the purpose of this video, I'm just going to say it's a slow figure eight in one hand and a fast figure eight in the other. So the fast figure eight is happening in between the two cracks of the slow figure eight. So like this, and then the hands are going to switch so that now. The hand that's done the fast figure eight does the slow figure eight after that. Switch. Switch. Simple. Once you've learned that pattern, um, you're going to be start. You're going to replace the fast figure eight cracks with throws. The reason this pattern is super good for this is for two reasons. The first is that it teaches your hands to do two different things at two different times. Uh, which is important because you're going to want one hand doing something while the other hand is focusing on catching the whip. And the other thing is uh, that the whips are always operating in parallel to each other and so you're at a very low risk of having the whips tangle, which can be annoying. So learn the changing eights. And then take the fast figure eights and replace them <coughs> with throws. For example, I'll do it and I'll replace the fast figure eights with uh, elbow tosses, for example. And obviously you can see you're going to really want to focus on getting your throws consistently in the right place because you can't be running around when you have two whips. It's super difficult, but I'll try again. idea. Uh, you could also do a reverse elbow toss. Um, and so on. So any throw that I've talked about or any other throw you discover could probably be put into that routine um, and is a good sort of base for learning throws with two hands. The second pattern relies on throws. It's a pattern that I made a few years ago called the skip over. It looks like this. It's really simple. Um, it's, I find that it's quite visual, which I really like. And yeah, it doesn't take long to learn. So it actually relies on a throw that we already learned, which was this one. The release in between the slow pick rates. What you're going to do is take your two whips. You're going to put them to one side of you. You're going to take the whip that's in front, so the arm that's crossing over. And you're going to do a spin with it this way. And when that happens, your other arm is going to go underneath so that your arms cross. Once you're in this position, this whip, the one that's underneath, is going to get released and then caught on the other side so that your arms uncross. So over, release, and now my arms are uncrossed and I'm sort of here. Then, right when you catch the whip, you're immediately going to crack it in a cattleman's crack. Like that. And then this other whip is going to swing up for a reverse cattleman's crack. Just like that. And now, once you've done that repetition, you'll realize that the whips are in the exact same spot, but on the other side of your body. And so you can repeat what you just did, but opposite, so that now your other arm is doing the spin, and your other arm is doing the throw. 
and you're back here. And the more you get comfortable with these motions, you can eventually just continue it. That's the skip over. I'll link to another video. I'll link to another video of it in the description. Uh, I can't speak today, um, which I made a while ago. Uh, that maybe goes more in detail. I don't really remember. But yeah, so those are different ways of throwing whips. When you have two, they covered releases, tosses, and slings for one. But again, you could use those in your two end of whip cracking. And I hope that this has been helpful to you. I know there's a lot of information here, and you know I'm, I'm not the best at organizing my thoughts, but. Um, yeah, have fun, good luck, and I hope to see what you come up with.